from Lancaster, Virginia. The latest news and recaps in the world of professional wrestling. Welcome to the Wrestling Artistry Podcast. And now, here's your host, Andre Smith. Hello, 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 everybody, and welcome to episode number 20 of the Wrestling Artistry Podcast. I am your host, Andre Smith, and today is the 23rd of March, 2022, two more days before my birthday, in which I am going, which permitted, I will be blessed to see another year. Um, I know it's been a hot minute, and I think I had said this a while back, there are times in which life happens, and I feel bad that after being consistent for a while, I have fell off, or, you know, as this one YouTuber that I admire has, has said before, I slipped on a banana peel, but... I am here today to provide some sort of a show here. Hopefully, y'all will enjoy it. Um, all I got to all I gotta say is, everyone, take one day at a time. Just try to do the best you can, and things will fall into place. But anyway, um, back on to the situation at hand. Um, welcome to episode 20 of the Wrestling Archery Podcast. Today, I will be discussing NXT 2.0 that occurred last night. Um, I do not have an AEW Rampage review as it came on way too late. And I had, like I, as I said earlier, I had a lot of stuff going on. So, wasn't unable to get to it. Hopefully, next time, I'll be able to provide a preview for y'all. And plus, I am going to... Uh, go g- briefly go over some tidbits in wrestling history and also if you you um I, that will be for people that are on YouTube do not forget to hit the like and subscribe button to and share this video the video version of this podcast everyone and to everyone else you can listen to this on Podbean and as well as I believe I should be on Apple I double check that. Like I said, it's been a while. But anyway, I'm on Pop Bean. But I digress. Anyway, NXT 2.0. The show opens up with a NXT North American Championship ladder match qualifying match. Roderick Strong versus Solo Sikoa. Strong shows off his technical skills until Sikoa nails Strong with her right hand. Strong nails Solo with chops and punches, but gets laid out with a slap and a flying headbutt. Strong gets the advantage of pulling Solo towards the ropes throat first. Strong also delivers a boot to the chest, but only gets a one count. Strong hits an over-the-knee backbreaker for a two count. They call her the Messiah the Backbreaker, and with good reason. Strong hits an angle slam for a very near fall. Solo comes back with... With some body shots and a Samoa drop for a two count. Sakura hits a top row splash for the win, joining Santos Escobar in the upcoming ladder match with the North American champ Carmelo Hayes. Our next match we have Dexter Loomis versus Tony D'Angelo. Loomis hits an impressive followaway slam. D'Angelo takes control when he sweeps one of Loomis' legs from under him, causing Loomis to hit face first into the steel steps. As Loomis went for a leg drop, Tony was out of position, it seemed like, so somewhat of a botch there, I believe. Tony went to go get his crowbar, but Indy Hartwell, Dexter Loomis' wife, grabbed it and grabbed it away from him, but then her quote-unquote best friend, Persia Parada, took it away from Indy. They started arguing. Tony then went went and snatched a crowbar away from Persia, but in the process, swung around and hit Loomis in the head. D'Angelo then hit his swing cradle suplex for the win. Tony was in the ring talking trash about what he did to Tommaso Ciampa the previous week, but then Ciampa's music hits. And as D'Angelo is waiting in the ring for him, 
Champa comes from behind, hitting the fairy tale ending, getting a measure of revenge. Sweet revenge. Next up, some women's action as Electra Lopez versus goes up against Fallon Henley. Lopez dominates most of the match with her size and power. There was a fight that broke out between um, Fallon's friends, Briggs and Jensen, and Raul Mendoza and Joaquin Wilde. Um, at that, Lopez <laughs> it proves to be too much for Fallon Henley. She wins with a spinning power bomb. Draco Anthony apparently is being stalked by Joe Gacy. Will Joe Gacy get him in the fold? We shall see. Robert Roode. And next up in the match against former NXT champion Braun Breaker, both former NXT champions. This match has been a slugfest for the most part, going back and forth. Breaker goes for a spear, but NXT champ Dolph Ziggler pulls Roode out of the way. To Dolph's chagrin, the ref saw Ziggler and ejects him from the match. Breaker hits a top rope Frankensteiner, but landed awkwardly. Hopefully, he didn't do too much damage. Looked like he was holding on to his right clavicle or something, and... Hopefully it didn't break anything. I haven't heard any reports or anything yet, so hopefully he's fine. At one point, Rude mocked Braun Breaker's uncle, Scott Steiner, by doing the, the flex elbow drop followed by push-ups. Mm-mm-mm. Big Papa Pump will be so proud. Rude dies off the top rope but gets caught by a power slam from Breaker for the win. Afterwards, as Brown was walking up the ramp, he had his back turned to the entrance, which was the wrong thing to do, as Ziggler catches Breaker with a super kick and proceeds to talk trash to him. There's another teachable moment from Chase University, or Chase U, as Bodie Haywood, the protege of Andre Chase, delivers an essay on fortitude. As the student raises his hand, Bodie proceeds to cuss him out. Bleeping out, bleeping out most of it, of course. Andre Chase intervenes, asking Bodie where his anger come from and also where he learned to talk like that. Bodie says that he learned from Chase, who responds to saying that this is, that was the most beautiful thing he's ever heard. And he start cussing at the steward. I'm like, good grief. What the heck of a cow class. Such language. And we come to find out that next week will be Bodie Haywood going up against Vaughn Wagner. Next up, we have another ladder qualifying catches qualifying match. As A Kid goes up against Grayson Waller. This was a good match with A Kid showing off some agility and at one point locked Waller in a submission as Waller went for his roll through stunner. Waller wound up getting the advantage and at after and hitting his stunner, stunner after all after some back and forth to secure his spot to the North American title ladder match. Next up, we had the Creed Brothers versus the Grizzled Young Veterans. GYV controlled much of this match, and as they were going for the Doomsday device, Julius Creed managed to work his way out of Zach Gibson's grasp there, causing James Drake to move out of the way. As he did this, he landed awkwardly on one of his legs, becoming prey to the Creeds as Brutus hits the low clothesline for the pinfall. Apparently, the Creeds have made a couple of enemies as there's a video shown of a pair of individuals vandalizing Dynamite's locker room. Next up, we have Gunka versus Duke Hudson. One thing I gotta say about this match, it was a pretty brutal affair, but those chops. There was one spot in that match in which Gunther caught Duke Hudson with a chop that echoed throughout the whole arena and it was it sucked to be Duke Hudson that's all I gotta say Gunther wins with a power bomb after an intense match next up um, as Gunther starts talking about LA Knight LA Knight comes out and challenges Gunther to a match at Stand and Deliver and next up we have for to close for the last match of the night we have the finals of the Dusty Rose Women's Tag Team Classic as Il Shirai and Katie Ray goes up against Wendy Chu and Dakota Kai and this was a pretty, pretty pretty good match pretty good tag team match but it turned out Il and Ray got the pinfall after 
Io hit her moonsault to get their victory. As the confetti pops up and they had the trophy in the ring and everything, toxic, toxic attraction comes in to interrupt the party. Talking trash, mainly Mandy Rose talking trash. Io and Ray decide that instead of going for the tag team championships, they're, they're just going to try and make Mandy Rose's life a living hell by make trying to make the NXT Women's Championship match a fatal four-way. And it, they made it, I guess from what I understand, it is official. It will be Mandy Rose defending her NXT Women's Championship against Kelly Ray, Il Shirai, and Cora Jade. All right, now, I said I was going to briefly go over some wrestling history here. All right, on this day in wrestling history, we have... Oh, just a couple of no- noble things here. 1984, Nature Boy Ric Flair defeated Harley Race to win the NWA World Title in New Zealand. This happens to this title change happened to be one of a pair of quote unquote forgotten title title changes. As for the longest time, this this was never counted. I think it was one of those situations, I believe, it has happened a couple times before, in which a title change happened overseas to, I guess, boost business in that town or whatever. I believe that's what the case was here. I'm not 100% certain, but I've heard of things happening like this before. Also, in 1992... Brian Christopher defeats Jimmy Valiant for the USWA Southern Heavyweight title in Memphis, Tennessee. This would be... Oh, by the way, credit, mad credit to PW Insider to provide this information. Shout out to them. This information is brought to you by PWInsider.com. Anyway, this would be the first of 25 title runs for Brian Christopher. 1997, WrestleMania 8, WrestleMania 13 takes place. And on that particular WrestleMania was the I Quit match between Bret Hart and Stone Cold Steve Austin, one of the greatest matches in WrestleMania history. This hap- this match ended up being a double turn, meaning Brett came in as a face and Austin came in as a heel, and they basically switched roles with Austin starting to become the face, and afterwards, basically, his career went through the stratosphere, as everyone knows. And also on this on this card, The Undertaker pinned Sid to win the WWF Championship. Let's see. Also, last but certainly not least in this Greek in this review of wrestling history, two thousand one, March twenty third, two thousand one, twenty two years ago, twenty one. Um, wow, twenty one years ago. Oh my gosh, I can't believe it's been this long. WCW. <laughs> got purchased from Turner Broadcasting System by none other than World Wrestling Federation Entertainment as it was known at the time. Yeah. It's kind of a sad day in a way because, well, I heard WCW was not doing exactly great business, but it was essentially the end of the Monday Night Wars. Uh, those are the days so we got we have other things to look look forward to in wrestling so anyway that'll be it for this edition of the wrestling RC podcast um I'll try next time to bring more information to y'all including some recent wrestling news uh and that is it and be sure to tune in next time for another edition of the Wrestling Archery Podcast. And until then, fans, so long for now. <laughs>